Hello everyone, welcome to your virtual star party for the 16th of March 2014. I'm your host Scott Lewis and with us are our astronomers. My awesome co-host is Fraser Kane, uh, not home. Where are you Fraser? I'm on uh, scenic uh, Hornby Island right now which is uh, where my parents live. Oh, nice. So I'm uh, here enjoying the stormy weather. It's it's herring season on the Pacific coast uh, of Vancouver Island, and so what so you I'm get assuming is, a lot yeah. of people are cutting out shrubbery out there, right? <laughs> the shrubbery, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, no, it's it's madness. I, I should I should have got some pictures ready to share you, but it's like it's like it's snowed on the beaches, but the snow is herring row, and so <laughs> the herring row brings in the seagulls and brings in the sea lions and the orcas and it's just like total wildlife. So I try to get out here every every March to kind of just enjoy the the show. And it's great. We had a we had a sea lion just kind of poking up, looking at nice. us uh, like twenty feet away. Uh, tons of stuff. It's just been great. So so yeah, so I'm at I'm here on Hornby Island, which if anyone has any idea, I hope you're all Googling it right now. Where, where's Fraser at? <laughs> yeah, where's Fraser at Hornby Island? Hornby? <laughs> sounds made yeah. up. That sounds dirty, but yeah. <laughs> With but, all uh, that row on the rocks, you know. Yeah, all that row on the rocks. <laughs> but uh, so so but the internet's pretty uh, pretty mediocre here, so I know so we thought we'd have Scott take the take the reins this week. So I'm just gonna kick back. And enjoy the show. And, and so you're going to do <laughs> all the work I do behind the scenes, like share it all out to the internet now that we've gone live. I already and, did that. That was easy. Man, I had no idea how easy that job was now that I had to do it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our astronomers here. So from left to right, I have David Dickinson from sunny hey. Florida. <laughs> hey, this this may be our first do-less night I've ever had here in Florida, like ever. Hey, guys, I'm still setting up, so I'll be AFK back and forth. I'm going to mute you, Mark. Way to be rude and interject. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we'll get you next. Next with us in my backyard is Gary Canella. How you doing, Gary? Good. Everything's great here. Hot day. It, is, it was very hot today. It was like mm -hmm. 30, 30 out. I was not happening. Yeah. 30 like Celsius. It. 30 Celsius, yes. Wow. I was not happy with that. We have uh, Mark's empty room, because he's getting set up, and I can see my face in the reflection. That's kind of creepy. So I'm going to move on over to Roy. <laughs> How are you doing, Hello. Roy? Good. And where are you at? In um, your bunker. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm remotely controlling my bunker in Arizona. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I believe it's a compound, Roy. It's a compound. Uh, yeah, it's oh, a we've, compound now. You've upgraded from I've bunker upgraded to, to compound. compound. Nice. Yeah. And Stuart is, I don't know, are you there, Stu? I'm here. Ah. I'm here. I'm still, uh, I'm still in the process of, uh, of do dealing with equipment issues, so I'll be about ten, 10 minutes before my first image. All right. Well, we'll forgive you. And yeah, I know. Because you don't have a choice. Not at yeah, all. Cause, yeah, because you, you can pay me less. I, I, you know what? I will double your pay if you do it in five minutes. <laughs> Now, now I've heard that people can uh, send us questions and comments. How can they do that? Well, the what easiest the way right now for this is going to be using the Q&A app. So if you are on the event page on Google+, Plus, go ahead and click on the Q&A app, and you can ask us questions. I'm already seeing a bunch of them are rolling up, and I will select them throughout the show. You can also use the YouTube, the YouTubes. Leave us comments there. Um, I'll be trying to check them periodically, or Fraser can. Fraser can check those comments, okay. and I, as many I'm of us glad to it check those comments, much. Fraser. Yeah. Get to it. Oh, so Paul, uh, Paul, Gracie notes. If I'm not mistaken, I see a film photograph, photographic and larger, in bigger in the background of Fraser. Yeah, I'm in my dad's dark room. So I don't know if I've mentioned this in the past. My father is a is a photographer. So let me take you on a little adventure here. So I don't know if this is gonna work. Wow, there's a lot of light here. This camera's the bomb. So, so that's my dad's sort of old photographic supplies. That's the whoa. Okay, that's the uh, various enlargers there, and then that's all the chemicals and stop bath and. What is this film thing you're talking about? I don't. I, I don't understand. I don't get way it. way back. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're speaking so analog. I, I don't get what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, he doesn't. 
he doesn't use it so much. I will I will admit he's he's switched to to digital now. So after me, just you know, just nagging him for years. So. Well, if you aren't familiar with our show, what we do is we connect telescopes up to a Hangout on Air, and we broadcast it live here on the Internet. So you can interact with us in many ways, like the Q&A app and YouTube. We are also on Twitter, so you can either send us directly at the underscore VSP, or you can actually uh, send us directly. I'm Scientific Scott, Fraser's F. Kane, and a bunch of us are there too, so feel free to ask us questions uh, via Twitter. Uh, and I did put it up on Facebook as well. So we do have a page on Facebook called The Virtual Star Party. So if you have anything that you would like to see, any questions you'd like to ask, any comments you'd like to make about the objects we're seeing tonight, go ahead and get a hold of us in any way possible, and we will try to respond. We tend to get a ton of them in. So first we're going to look at David's <laughs> fading Jupiter. <laughs> it's coming in. I have clouds going overhead. That's why it's coming in and out. And there are two moons. I'll, I'm going to run the gain up here, and it will give a really distorted image, but you will see there's two moons off there to the side, kind of. You know, it's uh, Ganymede and EO were just casting shadows a few hours ago. Both of them at the same time, actually. It's kind of cool. You don't usually see two moons casting a shadow at once. I've you seen as many as three. Last year there was three moons casting a shadow. I think last October we actually caught that. And you said you grabbed a, a, an image of it earlier? Yeah, I can I can dig it out here in a bit. Yeah, dig it out in a bit. Or put it in the event page, because that's another thing that we love all you to do, that if you do your own astrophotography, please uh, share it with us in, in the Virtual Star Parties event page. I've linked it on our official G Plus page and in this event right now, and we will try to highlight those as well. And I'm thinking about doing another uh, photo contest. What do you think, Fraze? I love it. Let's do it. Let's, let's, so I think I'll set it up for next week. That way everyone can prepare and figure out what they want to do. And uh, we'll, we'll let it run for a week and a half or so. And yeah, we'll get the word out. Get the word out. Yeah, and everyone can submit their pictures. We'll use some kind of scientific process to decide what's best, and then we'll... Uh, super scientific um, process. Super scientific process, and then we'll, we'll promote those pictures and uh, try and, I don't know, incorporate into some kind of banner... Thing for the yeah. star party. Yeah, I mean, last last year when we did it, I went and made a bunch of 1080p desktop wallpapers out of them, and they are still up, and you know they were shared out quite a bit. So uh, I'll try to put the link back into the event page too, if you're interested in having some of our desktop wallpapers that are for free, taken by astronomers that are have either been in the show or have been submitting their stuff into the event. So I'm going to head on over to Gary's view here. And what are we okay. looking at, Gary? This is the horse head and the flame nebula. It's a one-minute exposure in hydrogen alpha, which is um, red, sulfur, which is green, and oxygen, which is blue. So it's a three-minute total exposure with uh, narrowband filters. Now, I, I know that you are not using a regular you know, color camera like we're used to seeing, like a handheld or a webcam. What are you doing to be able to get these colors out? Well, I've got a filter wheel in front of the camera, and because I live in a light polluted area, if I try to take regular pictures, like from a color camera, I just I can't see anything in the sky. It gets blown out. So what I've got is a filter wheel that has some very narrow filters. There's one that at the range that hydrogen alpha emits very very narrow band. There's sulfur and there's oxygen. So there's the three colors. Then what I do to make them color, so I take three separate pictures with each filter. And then I make them color, and I map them to red, green, and blue, which is what a color picture has to be made up of. So in this case, I'm mapping hydrogen as the red. And any green, a little bit of green you'll see in there is sulfur. There's a little bit down uh, around in this area. Oh, yeah, I can see it. And, um, and the blue is oxygen, although it's not showing up real good. This, this is because this is blown out. This is the uh, Alnitec, the left-hand star in Orion's belt. Yeah. I That's really awesome. That. That's I, awesome. I, I, I That's the you... best one so far, I think, with the new color method, Gary. That's just terrific. Thank you. And the yeah, it looks amazing. And Eric uh, agrees. That's really nice, Gary. And Thank I you. agree, too. And I'm going to go ahead and do another one. This is so beautiful and humbling. It is. I mean, what we're looking at here is just absolutely wonderful. And you know, Orion is so 
close to us relatively to many of the other objects we're seeing and being able to see the structures like this horse head and everything over in Orion's belt uh, is absolutely beautiful. And if there's anybody making comments about Cosmos, please, no spoilers, <laughs> please. Um, I have yet to see it because it's not going live for another 45 minutes. So as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go watch it. But Do we want to talk about what we thought of the first episode? or I think that's a great idea. And I know you've got some opinions on it, Phrase. What do you think about the, the first episode? <clears throat> well, I liked it. Um, I it felt uh, very spiritually connected to the original Cosmos, but with upgraded graphics. And Neil deGrasse Tyson is just, he's the, he's the best. I mean, he just... He's who we all want to be uh, when we grow <laughs> up. He's such an amazing science communicator. And uh, and so, like, you just put it all together, right? You got this, these amazing... Because we've been using all the same graphics, all the same animations, all the same pictures, all the stuff that we're doing. I know you are you have to do the same thing. You look through the NASA stuff, and it's all the same material. And so right. they went, and they just made a whole bunch of new material. And I saw a few of the familiar faces, but mostly brand new animations and graphics, and that was just great to kind of update it. So, Neil was great. Uh, you know, I think he's he's a little held in by by the script. Like, when you let Neil, you know, uh, many of us, I hope, have heard, had a chance to, like, meet Neil in person and hear him sort of go off. Right. And he's great, and he's so great, and he's got all this wonderful material, and he has a it's all on the top of his head, and he's literally, he will just, um, uh, Pamela says that he holds court, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and so it was, it was a little unfortunate that we didn't get a chance to hear it in, in Neil's words, right. as opposed to the stuff that was, that was written for him, but uh, you got a little taste of it near the end where he talked about his personal experience with, with, uh, with Carl Sagan and the connection between him and Carl Sagan, so, so I think they're doing a great job. I, uh, I mean, obviously, I you know I don't I'm not learning anything new right. from the right. from the show, but I when I think about you know my kids are just watching it and they they think it's great. So I, I, uh, I, I think they're doing. And a I'm going to jump in real quick before we jump around. Is that uh, there are a few of our viewers that have not seen it, so let's try to keep this a spoiler free, um, way just way of our. Imp- our take on it, because there's so many things we could talk about that are specific, but let's just talk about how we felt and how we... Well, it was, it. it was funny in the end where Neil said, it, God did it. Yeah. That, was, that came as a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, okay. there's one question in there that about the constellations. That's actually from one of the one of Carl Sagan's episodes. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. He would show the, the constellations as they spun around from different angles or what they would look like 5,000 years from now or... 10,000 years ago. Well, and, and you know, I, I think that question here from Brian uh, says, I have a question about our astronomers about constellations. How long would it take for well-known constellations to look totally different? And it depends on a few things. One, which being time. Time is the biggest factor, but then the other thing there is you're dealing with parallax, so you're needing to know how far away they are compared to you. So if something's closer and it's moving, it's going to move quicker across the sky as opposed to something farther away. It's going to have a smaller angular distance from that, so it's going to take a little bit longer to move. So it, it does depend on a lot of things, but really it's just a lot of time. And we, can, we can slowly... Like, what's like, that? Like 10,000 years, 20,000 years. Like I remember seeing pictures. Like you would see the the Big Dipper, and in 10,000, 20,000 years, it would look pretty different. So, right. so those stars are, you know, the, the stars that are bright are moving pretty quickly across our sky because in many cases they're fairly close. Right. And so we're going to, so, you know, you would see in 20,000 years, you would see the Big Dipper look pretty distorted. In 100,000 years, it would look unrecognizable. And that sort of goes the same for a lot of the constellations that we see. Right. Now, uh, back to Cosmos, David, I know that you had something you wanted to say on it. Oh, I just, I had uh, the image of, uh, that you were talking about, about uh, Jupiter's moons casting shadow right there. Oh, nice. That is awesome. Yeah, that was from a few hours ago. That was, uh, that's Eo and Ganymede casting a shadow, and you only see that a couple times a year where both moons are casting shadows. Uh, And very, very occasionally, like maybe two or three times a decade, you get three moons casting a shadow. With with the resonance of the moons, although there are four Galilean moons, you can only see three at one time cast a shadow. You'll never see four. 
you know, it would take a lot more. My hands are moving around right now, but you can't see. What <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's due to due to the resonance of the moons. It, you'll never see all four casting a shadow. Only three max. I thought Cosmos was great. Also, very well done. I, I have to agree. What I, I think the biggest thing into it is you, you can't go into it. For those of us who have seen the original, it you, you can't go in and expecting a reboot. It's not a redo of what Carl did. It is a completely different work that is inspired by Carl. And um, I think it did a really good job. I, mean, I know some things, you know, video-wise and with cinematography on the way they were changing for a newer generation. Cause it's almost 35 years old from the original. So you do have to update the way that you convey this information to a new generation. And I think they did a really good job at doing that. I remember the first one live. Excuse me. I remember the first one when it was shown for the first time. Yeah. And it was quite an experience. Yeah. What was that, Roy? He still has his, uh, his imaginary, his ship of his imagination. Yeah. The spaceship to the so, imagination. Yeah. Which... So they, they bring some of those things from the old cosmos in. Right. Well, I'm going to well, head on over to Roy's view anyway, since we're going to end on that. And what are we looking at, Roy? That is uh, Fraser's favorite object, the Rosette Nebula. It is Fraser's favorite. As we it give two favorite. thumbs way, way up. <laughs> That's funny. Helen Reed wants to know when we're going to get Neil deGrasse Tyson on the VSP hangout. Anytime. I vote get him for that. on the internet. <laughs> whenever he wants, whenever he's ready. And I'm sure. Yeah, I, I we're a couple of degrees away from Tyson. I think we might be able to pull something. We were talking with Star Talk a while back. Yeah, the Star Talk people are are one degree away from him. So you know. Yeah. We should, yeah, we'll we should jump we back down that road and see what we can do about having, yeah. having a special guest appearance by NDT himself. I would love you if you could do that. Would you? Well, then that's all we need, Gary. That, uh, yeah, we have that. the motivation of Gary's love. I, I would love that. Gary, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you should, if you, if you want to see Neil in his form, uh, go to YouTube and just search for Neil deGrasse Tyson... Uh, UFOs, and he he's on stage, and he t somebody asks him if he believes in UFOs, and he just goes on this nine-minute, beautiful discussion on confirmation bias and all, all all this kinds of stuff that is just it it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. My favorite Neil deGrasse Tyson is him and Stephen Colbert. Yeah, that that was a really good shot when they're just in there, just just waxing philosophical about space. Yep. It was awesome. Uh, I got the view over here on David. Yeah, I'm on the full moon. Well, we just passed full moon a few hours ago. I'm kind of panning around trying to get a good focus on it. It's actually hard to get a good focus because there's not a lot of contrast on the moon when it's full. Right. It's, you, we're looking at it right bright edge on. It's it's better to look at it when it's like at first quarter or so. And plus I'm looking through thin clouds. Oh, that's a great view right there's there. A, a right bit. there. I love there's that. a Terminator right there, yeah. See if I was looking. I knew there'd be a crash. Uh, well, well, David's talking. We got a request from Mike Beto to talk about the upcoming occultation of Regulus yes. by an asteroid. David, what's going yeah, on? There, there is for viewers up in the tri-state area, up in the New York, Connecticut, New Jersey area, on early, early Thursday morning, asteroid. I believe the number is 156 Aragon is going to occult the bright star Regulus, and that's it's going to be the brightest star to ever be occulted by an asteroid. It's going to happen, I believe, we got a post on Universe today, it's, it's right around 1 a.m. local that morning. It's also going to pass up into Ontario and Quebec, too, they'll see it there. So what will be kind of cool is you'll actually see the constellation Regulus, or the constellation Leo, missing the brightest star in it for about 16 seconds or so, if you're along that 50-kilometer shadow line there through the... And we got maps up on Universe Today of all that, so it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. Not that rag. Yeah, yeah. we got lots of we got lots of stories on. We got we got David's story on this, so so hopefully probably, someone's gonna probably, catch them. I'll probably be uh, I'm in contact with some of the people at the uh, International Occultation Timing Association, and I might be running another article afterwards if they get any kind of useful data. I mean, there's if you get enough viewers of an occultation right along the Gray's line and right along the path of the asteroid, you can actually map the profile of the asteroid with each in, if each individual 
individual observer gets a good timing recording of when the star winked in and winked out. And you get everybody's geographic uh, GPS location down. So there's some real science to be done. We could map out the sh uh, profile of the asteroid. There's a chance uh, Regulus we know has a white dwarf companion. Uh, there's a, a remote chance that might be able to be viewed. Uh, by high-speed video during the occultation, and Aragon might have a moon. It's happened before. Might have a moon, been, yeah. It's happened before. There's been asteroid occultations that amateurs have observed, and they've saw secondary wink outs in, in addition to that primary wink out. Uh, and even people that are outside of the the path of the occultation are being urged to look because they might see uh, an unseen moon of uh, Aragon actually wink in and wink out. Uh, so Cecil Morgan over on uh, Google Plus says, after Neil deGrasse Tyson's comments on accuracies in popular movies like Misplaced Stars and Titanic, I can't wait for him to tear in all the conceptually misleading animations mm -hmm. in the new Star series Cosmos. So, yes, there were absolutely some scientifically misleading uh, animations. I saw three in just the first episode. One is, I think everyone's noticed this, he goes past the asteroid belt and it's like right out of Star Wars. Right. Yeah. yeah, that was the first one I noticed. I went wow. right. You know, if you pass through the asteroid belt, it would be like you might see one asteroid, and you're, Con there's no way you're going to see a second. Contact uh, did that, and I think we're just stuck with that. <laughs> uh, the second one was actually they had the great red spot on Jupiter, and they had it describe. It looked like it was like sunken down below the yeah the Jupiter, but it's actually apparently it's up. It's actually a bulge on Jupiter. Um, and, then the, and then the other one was that they went through uh, the uh, the rings of Saturn, and it looked like it was kind of plowing through this these clouds of ice and dust. But actually, the the rings of Saturn can be a meter thick, ten meters thick, right? You know, between one and ten meters thick. And so the the spaceship of imagination would have space above and space below as it was plowing through the ring. Um, and then, of course, they did the same thing with the Kuiper Belt, and they did the same thing with the Oort Cloud. But also, so, de it depends on how big a spaceship of the imagination is. Good point. <laughs> good point. It could I, be an it could be like the, yeah. I, I want to know why Carl Sagan's weekly planner was absolutely blank except for Neil deGrasse Tyson's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, that's all I got. All I got, <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. As he well, should. So some, Somebody on Twitter said, well, it was Saturday, because we were talking about that. It's like, yeah, I guess maybe that was the only thing he had to do on Saturday. But he's Carl Sagan. Mm. Well, I see Gary's counterpoint to Roy's here. Yeah, and I thought I'd throw a color, false color one up. That's amazing. Now, we're using the same tricolor, or just doing same, one singular? Same macking, one minute at uh, each, each color. That is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I love seeing the little tendrils, right? That we always see, and it's something that it's still, yeah. I think Fraser's starting to pull me over into this being one of my favorites as well, just because it, it is such a dynamic, beautiful thing, and it's in color, which is always a good thing, especially when Fraser's involved. If it's in color, then we're good to go. Yeah, that's all I want. I want to see color. Color yeah. me. <laughs> always well, glad to oblige. Oh, and yeah, looks like. Nailed this technique, Gary. You're the master. This is yeah. amazing. Thank you. That you can God. do this live is blowing my mind. <laughs> right. And, and now, and in Los Angeles. So Gary's not off in some dark, dark sky site. He's in LA, just like we, just like I am. But the filters he's using is able to get rid of a lot of that light pollution, and look at these very, very, very thin lines of the spectrum to be able to pull this stuff out. And you have like a monster telescope as well. That, that 14 helps. inch and a, a real wide field of view. Right. So I'm going to hop over to Stuart real quick. That he, he got everything up. What are we looking at, Stu? This is the Beehive Cluster. And it doesn't look terribly impressive right here. But if you look at this with an eyepiece, which is why I kind of was scanning through and I decided to pick it, it's really kind of cool because if you think of. Um, a beehive with bees just sort of flying around kind of randomly. This is kind of what this reminds me of. Just bees just kind of flying around the, um, you know, fly, flying around a beehive. It's, it's just this big open cluster um, that's very, very pretty in an eyepiece. Oh, I, isn't the Winnie the Pooh 
you know, nebula yes. underneath. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's and tut tut, it looks like rain. <laughs> <laughs> now that looks really great. Now, what are you using tonight? Um, it's been a while since we have you in here. Yeah, I have a 140 millimeter uh, f7 refractor. Um, so it's wide field, but not nearly as wide field as uh, Gary's. And um, I have a monochrome camera like um, Roy and uh, Gary both have. In fact, I have exactly the same camera that uh, Gary has. Um, I'm having trouble getting color mostly because I'm not automated like they are. And so in order for me to get color, I would have to get my red, my green, my blue, and then manually stack them and then align them and then, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's... Um, it would just take me too long to, to get this, uh, to get it done. I mean, I could do it, but it would be like only two or three images a, a star party. But um, uh, so with me, you're stuck with monochrome until I can figure something out there. Uh, You'll afraid, sort but, it out. Yeah. I didn't think no I could problem. Do either. <laughs> yep, you're good, Stu. And we now have Mark. Mark is all set up and ready to go. And what are we looking at, Mark? Hey, guys. Sorry, it took me a while to get set up. Uh, I've got a Jupiter up in the... Uh, the old eyepiece right now. A sideways Jupiter. What's yeah. up, Jupiter? It all depends on your point of view. That there is no up in space. Exactly. Very true. Isn't everything up? Yeah, <laughs> everything's up. So what are you using, Mark? Uh, so where are you at? A, I'm in suburban Chicago, uh, so the light pollution is horrible here, uh, but the planets are, are bright enough where it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I've got a Celestron C8, which is an 8-inch uh, schmidt cassegrain on a Celestron C-Gem mount. And, you know, that's where 90%, 99% of astrophotography happens is in the mount. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll turn the exposure up a little bit so we can see some moons. Show us the moons. There we go. Oh, there you go. And if I zoom back out, you can see... I see two, four of them. Well, if you zoom back in and take off your lower third real quick. Yep. Again. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So there's three of them. Oh, that's great, that's Mark. That's cool. No, I love it. And I, and I love that you're in suburban Chicago. You know, this is not something that you have to be in some far-off remote place. You can be pretty much anywhere, and you can find the right setup to, you know, find your own corner of the cosmos to look at. Yeah, the, the planets and the moon are really easy to see, even if you're in really bad light pollution. So they're, you know, really good favorite targets of mine, especially for stuff like this. And this is live video. This isn't... Uh, you know, composited images, you know, 30, 60 second exposures like, you know, I know Gary and Stuart do. So if, uh, you know, if anybody's interested, this is actually live. And if I, and if a plane just happens to fly in front of Jupiter, we'll see it. Now, if there's a supernova that happens, though, you know, <laughs> we don't worry. Right. <laughs> Not on Jupiter. Could be an impact. Could be an that, impact on Jupiter. That would be awesome. We, yeah, if we, we see an impact on Jupiter live. That, that's, Everyone that's watch, us. Careful. We're owning it. Um, and I'm going to request your, uh, is M53 up, anybody? And is anyone able to get that? I'll take a look. Awesome. Well, Gary's looking. I'm going to head over to David's view of yeah. the moon. Yeah, I, oh. I just re yeah, I reconfigured it with the life cam aiming at the eyepiece. So you got the, instead of having that zoomed in bit of the limb like at a moment ago, now you got the full yeah, view of the... Great. Just about full. It's 99%. It's waning gibbous now, technically. It just passed a few hours ago, hey, but it looks pretty cool. Actually, I'm not even seeing it right now. I've, I'm seeing your icon. I'm seeing it. Okay, well, yeah. good. Yeah, but David, we're one month away, right, from uh, yes. Mini Moon. No? The, the, next, the next full moon is on April 15th is a total lunar eclipse, first nice. of two for the year. Total and, and, lunar yes. eclipse. And, oh, and I'm going to be flying. I'm gonna be like flying on the 14th. Oh, that's fine. I'll it's do on, it. I'll do it, and I'll actually yeah. participate. I'll hook up my binoculars. Oh no! Oh yeah, I and, will host and be imaging. Oh the no! Time. I'm gonna be like in the air on the 14th. Okay, I gotta figure this out. North, North, Ameri <laughs> North America gets to see both total lunar eclipses this year too, so it's gonna be kind of cool. You need a window seat on the plane, Fraser. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll be closer. Yeah, I'm going to do the math and figure out which side of the plane I want to be on. I'm, I may be able to broadcast with this setup right here. It's got a pretty good... Uh, oh, yeah. 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 There would be perfect. The only thing is, once it goes into the shadow, depending on how dark it's going to be, I'll have to be writing the contrast. I know when I'm doing DSLR photos during a lunar eclipse, it's the same thing. You've got to slow the exposure way down because uh, the, the moon gets a lot darker than that full frame moon. So hold on. So what day is that then? The, the 14th, uh, it, right? It, the it, is, it is April 15th. It's early in the morning. That's, I don't have all my data in front of me, but I'm Monday, pretty sure... Tuesday? I'd have to so look. That's a Tuesday calendar. morning. Tuesday, okay, I will be back in town, so I will be able to help. So don't don't you guys get too crazy without me. All right, yeah. well, we'll figure right. something out. We'll we'll make a huge event for it. Yeah, well, it's going to be big because all of North America is going to see this. This, so. yeah. this can be one of the bigger, it's one of the bigger astronomical events this year, yeah. Yeah. Actually, real quick, uh, speaking about streaming, uh, we have a question from Scott Chapman. He's saying, what software are the presenters using to display their live video? Uh, are you guys using anything crazy? I know David's got a very expensive setup over there. Super expensive. <laughs> I'm using Please. a $20, $20 Walmart webcam, actually, yeah. for those close-in shots. <laughs> Point, he just holds his yeah. camera over yeah, top of it's, the... Uh, well, <coughs> I, 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 remove, I remove the uh, the the lens off it, and then I have an eyepiece adapter in it, and it just plops into the eyepiece holder. Now, oh, with nice. this one, this view of the moon right now, I have the life cam just on a, a little afocal adapter that's aimed at the eyepiece, so it's not even hooked into the eyepiece barrel. That's exactly how I got started with this ragtag group of people. <laughs> is I had a, the, my life cam hooked up to, um, let's see, was for the annular eclipse. It was the first time I, I actually was uh, an imager on this, and yeah, I actually use electrical tape to keep it at the eyepiece. <laughs> I've used duct tape before. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, our, our methods have gotten a lot better since then. <laughs> We've become a little sophisticated, a little more professional. Well, Scott, you were just at, you were just spectacular in that. Just you were just trying to do it through your your like um, cell phone access or something. Yeah, or something like that. It was, was just am amazing. I was hand guiding using uh, tethering from my from my mobile phone to actually use the internet on battery power because we had no. Actual, it was it was crazy. It was a gong show. And is anybody else marked? Are you using anything special for your live feed? Oh. His viewfinder is closed. So I'm going to assume nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to head over to Gary's view real quick. And what are we looking at? I got two of these. This is Orion. And this was done at 10 seconds. So you can see some of the details of the stars in the center. Right. And a little bit of the cloud. So let me put another one up. This one is one minute, so you'll see when it changes here about now. About now. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, there we more, go. More detail you get in here, but the center is completely blown out. So the first one was 10 seconds with each filter. This one is one minute with each filter. And you can see some of the, even the wispy stuff down in here. Right. And it just shows how bright it is there, where you you know, and you're getting a very fine, you know, very small bit of light coming through, and it's still blowing it out, mm -hmm. just because how bright that area is. Yeah, I can't. The center, I can't even. Sh I can shoot it at one second and maybe make out the stars. Right. But more than that, it's blown, totally blown out, no matter how I stretch it. So let me see here. What do we have? Oh, we have Stewart. And we have someone slewing, and it's loud. Yeah, that's me. Sorry, I'm going to my next target. Um, I, 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 it's, it'll, it'll stop in a sec. Don't worry. Talk over it. Uh, yeah. You're loud. Uh, oh, so this oh. is um, NGC 891, and um, uh, in this, oh, I'm about to take an image of my tree. Cool. Okay, that's not going to happen. Um, tree nebula. Yeah, the 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 tree nebula. So yeah, so this in the this is an area of the sky that. Um, Roy actually turned me on to that um, in this particular image you can actually see just in this two minute image you can see uh, two or three galaxies um, if you kind of squint little smudges there's there's the obvious one there and then there's one um, at about uh, 10 o'clock towards the upper left yeah. just a tiny little one um, and in an image that I took like this that was about an hour or two long, I can't remember, last year, um, I counted 37 in my field of view. Oh, wow. Um, wow. And so in this field of view, there's 
there's going to be at least um, 20. I mean, there, you, you, you just can't see it just because it's such a short exposure. But um, uh, just to give you an idea on just this little, small, little field of view, how, how these galaxies are just all so – there's so many of them, and each have – Billions and billions of stars. <laughs> <laughs> billions, <laughs> billions, and billions, billions of stars. Yeah. Um, we got a request from Mars. David, can you get Mars? 22 degrees up on the East Coast. Um, Phrase, what was that other request that somebody wanted? M M M53, and I'm trying it right now. Okay. So I, I know it's not the first of the season, but I think we should start getting it into the VSP. So, yeah, David, are you able to get that? Not with this rig. No, I can't go deep. Oh. To get Mars. No, Mars. I can get Mars. Yeah, oh, Mars. Mars. Yeah, I can get that. Yeah. yeah, I only heard part of what you were saying. Yeah, let me try for it. I see it uh, about 20 degrees above the horizon. Let me reconfigure the cameras here, awesome. and I will try. So while we do that, Scott, Scott head back. Scott Chapman asked for Mars. You might Throw get it. Asked for Mars. Mars coming at you. Mars, Mars, Mars here in the VSP. I'm going to head on over to Roy's view, and what are we looking at, Roy? So this is uh, what can be what is referred to as the Tadpole Nebula. It's SH2236. So SH2236. Right I'm not yeah, seeing it right in here. See, yeah, I don't I see a tadpole. Right, you don't I see my cursor moving around. Oh, there we go. That's right in here. I'm still not seeing a tadpole. I'm seeing a You're frog not... that's been hit by a car. Oh, is that okay? That right in there. And I just muted too. Okay, now I can kind of see it now. The little wiggly part on that end. I guess. Yes. Maybe. I'll, I'll play Nicole and pretend I can see it. Pretend you can see it? Okay. Well, how about this? Uh, Kelsey Pitts asks, um, a little late in the conversation, where is everyone located? So, David's in Florida. Right. Uh, Stuart's in San Francisco. Roy's in, well, he's in Arizona. In the okay. compound. He's at the compound. The compound is in Arizona. Um, uh, Mark's in Chicago, and uh, Gary's in Los Angeles. And Fraser's on Hornby Island. Where and I'm on Hornby Island. Well, apparently there are aliens uh, per who? Let's see here. To Ronald. Ronald says that there's aliens on Hornby Island. Is that why you're there? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I knew it. Can you see the tadpoles now? There yes. we go. Yes, I can see the tadpoles now. That's awesome. Now, this is, this is an older picture you took? Yeah, I took this... Uh, Maybe six months ago? I can't remember. Okay. I think I speak for everyone, Roy, when I say that that is a very... That's sick. That's unbelievable. That's a crazy <laughs> can, picture. Can you put the your your full version of that into the event page when we're done? Yeah. That would be awesome. That's mad. That is gorgeous. And wow. So, so how, how long... What did it take for you to be able to pull that out? I would say that was probably... That's... that's uh, all narrow band imaging with my sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen alpha, I would say probably about, I want to say about 16 hours per filter. Wow. Because oh. I'm, I'm very picky on the sub-exposures that I keep. Right. That is off the hook. I, yeah, I, I, I want, see, this is why we're going to do another virtual star party photo contest, because we get stuff like this from, not from Hubble, not from these amazing space telescopes. The hard work and long hours put into these things. Roy wins. Yeah. But from Roy yeah. in his yeah. secret compound in Arizona. Right. <laughs> Where it's all actually fake. He all it's it's an oil painting that's yeah, this is large an oil scale. Painting. Yeah. <laughs> well the color is fake, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna head over see a bunch of stuff. What, what do you have up, Gary, besides um, Wispies? Well, this is my attempt at M53. It's right here. Okay. It's, it's, it's really like, low. Really low on the horizon, and I've got some clouds. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I, I looked for it, and that's when I said I have something behind my tree. Yeah, yeah. There, there's yeah. the cluster right there, but uh, 
there's my field of view with cloud. So uh, I'll get it in a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah, it's going to come up more. Well, it was a valiant effort. That was for Tim Monk. So we did try it M53. There it is. Yep. But you're also looking through a little bit of uh, that H2O nebula that's in the way. It's always a pain in the butt. Uh, Richard Drum, yes, that was NGC 891. Yes. Yep. And what do you have, David? Hi, Richard. Maybe. Right on! I have a very blurry Mars right on the horizon. There we go. <laughs> cool. There you go, Scott Chapman. L luckily, it focused in first time. Sometimes it takes me a while to fish around for it here. There you go. Yeah, it's uh, through, the I through the eyepiece. You can't quite see it here. I, I can see the northern polar cap. It's a little white dot when I was aiming at it. it. It looks like it might be on. Yeah, I do see it there. Well, it's, the clouds are covering it now. I do see it uh, on my right or left, probably. But we're we're closing in on uh, opposition. On the greatest on the conjunct on the opposition, right? Opposition is April eighth. Yeah, it's it's right before the lunar eclipse. As a matter of fact, like a week before, and the moon won't be very far away from Mars when it's eclipsed. It's going to be very near Spica and Mars. As a matter of fact, uh, within a few degrees when the moon is eclipsed next month. So this opposition is okay. It's uh, all Mars oppositions aren't the same because Mars has a very elliptical orbit. So it's not going to be like, remember, the great opposition in 2003 where it was like the closest in a uh, pick your number, 50,000, 100,000, whatever people would say, number of years. It was the closest in our lifetimes in 2003. And that spawned the August uh, Mars comes close every August uh, hoax email. That yeah. Goes around. <laughs> yeah, that. So, so Mars is, is at its closest to us this uh, next month, not in August. Matter of fact, it's hardly ever closest to us in August, but <laughs> only in 2003. We have an opposition coming up in, two, in 2018 that's nearly as good as the one in 2003. Well, and, and you keep using these words, David. Um, what, what do you mean by occultation opposition. and opposition? I mean, those sound Oppo like oppos opposition means opposition means from our earth, earthly perspective that uh, the moon is opposite to the sun. If you're to go out and watch when the sun sets. Mars will be rising opposite to it in, in the opposite side of the sky. And, and opposition is special because it's it's very near the closest approach that the planet can make to us, oh. usually within a week or so. And earlier when you were talking about the occultation, what do you mean? Oh, occultation? Occult, that just means... Which is that, that just, scary. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Every time I use the word occultation with some of my non-astronomy friends, they're, they're like, you sure you're not really an astrologer like we always say you are? Oh. It's like, <laughs> it's mm. funny. But it's... Uh, no, uh, an occultation is just when one body, like the moon or a planet or an asteroid, passes in front of another body. Technically, uh, a solar eclipse is an occultation, but nobody calls it an occultation. When right. the moon passes in front of the sun. Usually you hear it used when the moon passes in front of a star or a planet uh, or an asteroid passes in front of a star. Uh, sometimes a planet can pass in front of a star, too. So it's just when one body uh, occults or passes in front of another. It's probably one of the more bizarre terms we have in astronomy. Right. Which is why I thought we should add some clarity to what the, yeah. we're actually talking yeah, about. I, I know. It's like every time it's like, so what's this occult thing you're talking well, about? Well, we I just like to cast were... a spell on you with all this amazing <laughs> yeah. spell. I thought you yeah. guys were scientists. <laughs> Let's see here if we have anything we new. We do. Roy, what do you have up there? Uh, this one. What, is, what am I showing right here? That is IC443. It's the Jellyfish Nebula. Nice. I'm seeing it. It looks like Mark's got a star up. He's got a binary up. Right? I, I did, but I lost it. Extra webcam. Yeah, my... my camera software keeps crashing on me. I did have Caster up. I'm trying to get it back. Caster's a cool double. It's actually a, a, a sextuple star, but you'll only see three. Now, we did get a request in here. Um, let me see if I can find it. They're asking for the distances so they can have an idea of how old the light is. So for this one, for IC443, this is around 5,000 light years away from us. So we're looking at light that's 5,000 years old. It's finally coming in, and Roy's catching those photons on his detector and sharing them out on the Internet. And this is actually what we're looking at is a supernova remnant. So this is the result of what happened when a system went supernova and watching it just 5,000 years of that moving out. I mean, in general, right, you're, 
the nebula are a few thousand light years away. The galaxies are a few million light years away. Stars are usually a few hundreds of light years away. Right. So if you want to know exactly whether it's 1,500 light years or 8,000 light years, you know, it's somewhere in that range. You know, give or take a few... A give or take or, a few thousand light years. Right. You know, significant two, figures, two. you know, you're, you're good if you're, like, within two. Yeah. <laughs> Mars is about four of light minutes away. Right. Yeah, Mars is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mars is. Oh, I don't know about thirty-five million. I'm trying to think, kilometers away. How far is it? Away is it at its closest approach? About thirty-five I'd million. To, I'd have to convert. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I know it's about three three light minutes or away at its. Yeah. I'd, have, I'd have to do the math. I well, always. Go my, ahead. My base. My base understanding, and I am. I am not an astronomer. I'm just a guy with a telescope and a camera. Um, was that I, it was always like the planets always seemed to be Mercury, then Venus was double what Mercury is, and then Earth is double what Venus is, and then that's the way I always learned it. It's I mean that's not exact, but it's it's rough. So Mars would probably be about 160, 170 million miles. Well, so and it's something right. that we need to think about, too, is that these are orbits. So yep. it could be different parts in their orbit. You can either be on the same side of the sun, or you can be oh, on, yeah. completely on the other side of it. So it's not really... You know, but if you're talking about your orbital size, the radius of it, those are what we're right. talking about as far as its well, distance Mar from the sun. Mar Mars what? and Mercury, too, have very... Mars has a very elliptical orbit, noticeably right. ellip elliptical, where Earth is pretty circular. Earth, Earth varies only over a few million miles. Uh, Mars varies quite a bit, and Mercury does too. Mercury has the most elliptical orbit. Mars looks great, David. Yeah, it's come. I, I see a little notch of the pole cap down there on the yeah. bottom. I see a little white dot. That's the northern. The northern pole cap is tipped toward us. It's uh, it's summertime in the northern hemisphere on Mars right now. So zoom and enhance. That is zoom. Are you, are you <laughs> recording any of this? That's zoomed. No. Wow. Mike, oh, beyond the VSP. Mike, Mike did a great one in Mars recently. I, I do some sketching of Mars right around opposition. I should try this year. I haven't done any this year yet. So how many frames per second can you sketch Mars? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can sketch, like, one frame per hour. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So we're, we're coming up on the end. We have about ten minutes left, so I'm going to keep going through the, the comments here. And also, Fraser, if you can pull up some of the images that are being shared into the event page, that would be awesome. That's a lot to ask, Scott. I know. I, I, I am a slave driver when I'm in charge. So I'm going to head over to Gary's while we do that. And what are we looking at, Gary? This is M81 and M82. And this is the first time I've been able to pull out on a short exposure the... Uh, red part, M82, there's a whole bunch going on in the center. So there's a lot of hydrogen spewing out, so you can see the red area in there. And it's also, I'm getting a lot of green, so with that map. So this is the spiral galaxy, and this is the one that had the uh, supernova, but I think it's, it might be right here, but I think it's not visible anymore. Well, let's not make any claims on supernovae in the show. Yeah. <laughs> you know the Tom and supernova? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm loving that you're able to get color in these because it just adds a different layer of, of what's going on, what they're made out of. It's a, it's a big thing too because the when we're talking about those filters, is we're talking here, about the the elements that we're looking at. And here's Fraser. Who I'm are you sharing, sharing a, an image of? I'm sharing an image of Saturn from our good friend Howard McCalsey, and uh, he captured that with the SLU telescope. Oh, nice! Awesome. Yeah. So if you want to get access to a telescope on the internet, you can uh, you can use the SLU telescope. And they do they're doing a bunch of live streaming events. One mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, what were they doing? They're going to show the image of the moon. I think where the asteroid hit the moon recently. They did that earlier they did tonight. They did that. Yeah. 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 I don't know if they saw anything, but. <laughs> Yeah, but they're like the other people doing live telescope views on the internet. So, like those other jokers. Yeah. yeah. And then, and also another place too. If you if you are interested in doing um, your own from home, you can hook up to iTelescope, 
Yeah. You can actually get time on itelescope.net, I believe it is. And, and if you want to watch other astronomers, you can do look to the Night Skies Network, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they the Malin cams, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm going to hop on over to Stu. And, Fraze, can you pull up um, Mike Phillips' view of Mars that, that he shared into the event page earlier? Is that today? Yeah. I don't see it. Well, scroll down. I will. What do you got, Stu? Um, I got a couple, and since we're wrapping up, I'll just yeah. sort of show them one Have after the other. So this is M36, and this is um, a uh, an open another open cluster. Um, uh, also kind of pretty in the eyepiece, but um, a little bit compact and a little harder to see than the... Um, uh, what did I say, the Beehive uh, cluster before. And then um, somebody was asking about Castor, so I went ahead and slewed to Castor, and this is Castor, and you can see on it, I'd never actually bothered to image it before, but um, uh, you can see the uh, double uh, next to yeah. it. I'll zoom in on it here. Yeah. Oops, there we are. So, um, uh, um, I'm kind of pleased with this. This is a 15-second image. Um, uh, pretty good resolution, um, uh, and you can get good separation between the uh, between the stars there. Looks good. Yeah, it looks really great. And you said you had another one? Uh, no, those those were the two. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that looks really good. And let's see here. Oh, Fraser sharing uh, Mike's image. So one of our uh, tried and true, Mike Phillips. Uh, he has shared a, a great image into the event page here uh, with a bunch of his own shots of Mars as well as one of the um, of the map models next to it. Can you zoom that out a bit, Phrase? Nope. No, I can't. It's I'm using the Hangout toolbox to do it, so I can't zoom. Uh, well, well, can you screen share? Uh, I'm going to hop over to Dave's live view of it while I'll figure that out. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. Oh, and actually, I think Mark has something up. What do you have up, Mark? That looks like a double. Yeah. Yeah, I finally got Caster up. Oh, awesome. Oh, cool. So this, you know, what we just saw with Stuart's view, this is, you know, pulled back, and we're actually, this is what we're looking at um, a little bit further out. A star party fave. I like showing people caster. E each of each of those stars is actually a spectroscopic double as well. So there's really four, and there's another red pair of red dwarfs going around those. So there's six stars in that system. Wow, that's really but great. But we mark. only see, but we only see three. Only three. Oh hum. All right, Gary, what are we looking at? This is the first time I try to shoot the Running Man. This is Orion here on this side with the little comma part of Orion and see how blown out it is. Right. This is the Running Man Nebula right here. And you can see there's little wispies that are connecting them. Oh, yeah. But um, if, and this color is not looking real good, but there's looks like a leg here and a head and a leg here is why it's called the Running Man. It's upside down right now. In fact, let me, uh, let me do this. That might make it a little better. Nah, not much. In true color, you can really it really pops out. Yeah, in true color, it pops out. You can see the legs, and I think it's the head here and, and the legs there. Oh, I'll have to take a look at. It. I'm I'm seeing pretty, but I don't. I'm not seeing a man. Are you seeing a man? Anybody? No, I don't see it. Yeah, in true color, they're blue, so I'm not sure what. Uh, okay. Color. I'm probably. Yeah, in true color, that. it's it's like a shadow within the nebula. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really good. Oh, I see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, as well, I just switched over to David, and the, and the clouds go through. Yeah, so. there go the clouds. I, I think we lost Mars for good. <laughs> Goodbye, Let's Mars. See. So let's, I'm going to put up here on Roy's and, uh, image here of it was an IC twenty one seventy seven, and yeah, I'm going to look. Seagull. I, I thought that was the Jonathan Livingston. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Kicking it old school. You know, a little there. wider field of view to get most of it in there. And, and so what did you do to, to be able to get this image? 
That's a five minute image with hydrogen alpha. Wow, five minutes. Yeah. Your tracking is great. Oh, wait till you see my next one. Okay, you better hurry up. Cause we got four minutes, Roy. It's coming. It's coming. Hurry, no pressure. I saved, I saved the best for last. Stay no pressure. on we'll target. Say, we'll say goodbye and then we'll get back to Roy. <laughs> yeah. So, again, thank you, um, all of our viewers, all the, the fantastic questions. Sorry I couldn't get to all of them. But uh, I want you to go through all of our astronomers, starting with David Dickinson. Hey, I had three targets tonight. That's a first. That's awesome. That is a first for you. That's nice. <laughs> you, usually I got, like, one thing to aim at. <laughs> so where can people find more of you and your awesome sauce? Oh, Universe Today, Astro Guys, um, wherever else I might manage to find a home. <laughs> <laughs> the homeless astronomer? Pretty the much. Va the vagabond? I'm trying to sell a house right now. Anybody <laughs> want a house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary. Thank you, sir. You're quite welcome. And I see Roy's got a really nice M51 up. Oh, uh, we will get to that in a moment. I think we're going to go with that bang. And let's see, Mark. Hi, guys. Sorry, uh, only a couple targets tonight and a uh, late start. No, it was... I haven't used my equipment in like three months. Well, we we got to change that. We'll have to get you in next week. We're glad we can. The, the weather's been horrible here. Yeah. Like snow, cold, snow, cold. Well, I'll tell you. I, I think yeah. Gary and I can let you borrow our SoCal weather machine. I mean, we'll, yeah. We'll just please, please. Yeah, warm, hot. <laughs> please. Stuart, hey. where can we find more of you? Well, I'm. Uh, I tweet all my images at my uh, Twitter, which I just changed to. It's at uh, s2foreman, so at Stu Foreman, and on Google+. And I generally on Twitter, I talk astronomy. It's very astronomy wanky stuff, but uh, uh, it's um, we have a, a nice little astro Twitter community there. Yeah, you do. I'm always yeah. seeing you guys go back and forth on it. <laughs> all right, we're going to finish up here with Roy's image. What are we looking at, Roy? That would be M51. Wow. That is great. Oh, that's a great view. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, move, Stuart. That, that's a 10-minute luminance image. Jeez. Why did you have the time to take that? When you guys were talking. That was... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to for 10 minutes. What, what, do you, what are you trying to imply? That we talk too much? <laughs> this is not the Roy show, all right? So <laughs> okay. we have other astronomers to highlight. Yeah, apparently yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic, Roy. Wow. Now, is, is there anywhere that uh, people can find you and your work? On um, Google+. Plus. Google+. Plus. So follow Roy Salisbury. Follow everyone here. Because yeah, I know a I lot of them do post their work. Most and of my most of my astronomy stuff is on my observatory page at Wallapai Valley Observatory. Yeah, we'll link if you go to Universe Today after the Virtual Star Party. We'll link to everybody, and we'll link to mention some of the objects, and so you can try and follow this if you want to find out more. Speaking of Universe Today, who are you, Fraser, and where can they find out more about you? Well, I've switched. I've put my uh, my Twitter hashtag now, so I I apparently am using Twitter sometimes. So you can find me at F. Kane. The other thing you should do is if you like all of the, uh, we've been releasing, you know, a couple of new videos every week about different interesting topics about space and astronomy, like how do you jumpstart a dead star and how can you kill a black hole and why this is a special time in the universe. So go to um, uh, patreon.com slash universe today and you can see all of the additional information we'll give to all of the uh, the people who, who sponsor the Universe Today stuff. Not the Virtual Star Party. It's completely separate, but the uh, the videos that we're doing over on Universe Today. So so check that out. Awesome. Yeah. And I am Scott Lewis. I am on the Deep Astronomy Channel, Space Fan News, here at the VSP, Weekly Space Hangout sometimes. Uh, I own Know the Cosmos, Scientific Scott. And good good job posting, Scott. I yes, good job. I feel... Yeah, good I good feel like, I can take a break. I feel like I can come and hang out on Hornby Island and watch the wildlife and not panic. About well, you know, it's not parts. like I do this all the time. I know. I, I do people. a couple other hangouts yeah. now. Yeah. And, uh, I, Fraser, you should have brought your small little Galileo telescope. You should have. And then you could have taken pictures. It's pouring rain. No, there's no point. March here, forget it. Don't bother. So I, I think at some point, though, we do need to switch roles, because I've been an astronomer in this Hangout, 
I I don't think we've ever had you as an astronomer with me hosting, so we will have no, to. Use. No, no, yeah. that would be great. I will definitely at some point get the telescope going, and I'll I'll join in as an astronomer. Done. <laughs> it's it's freezing cold here in the Bay Area. I have a sweatshirt on and everything. Nice. <laughs> all right. Well, Cosmos is starting. I'm gonna bail and watch that. But thank you all. Um, if you want, please subscribe. Circle everyone here. Follow us on Twitter, and we will see you all next week.